stop. If you are about to buy a commercial building, make sure you watch this video before you pay any VAT. Hi, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimized Accountants, and I want to talk to you about commercial buildings. You may be subject to value added tax and SDRT, which you were not aware of. So in this slide deck, I'm going to give you an example of how you can mitigate VAT and indeed reduce your stamp duty land tax liability. So let's get into the details. All right, so let's get into the detail then of value and a tax when buying a commercial building. And indeed, let's look at the consequences then that has on stamp duty land tax as well. So let's go through. Before we do though, it is worth you watching another video, which a link should be appearing above my head right now, whereby you are looking to convert a commercial building into residential. I talk about the SDLT and VAT savings you can make when making this conversion. So go ahead and watch that video once you've watched this one, of course. And there's another video of a reduction of VAT of 20% to 5% when you're doing different types of property developments and conversion. That video is also worth watching. But again, please watch this video first. So let's talk about VAT then and SDLT. Uh, we're going to focus on the fact that whenever you're buying a commercial building, you need to read the small print. The reason for it is because you could be paying 20% VAT on a commercial building without realizing it. It is in the small print after all. So make sure you do your due diligence when you're going through the purchasing process. I also want to highlight the fact that residential SDLT is a lot more than SDLT on non-residential, which commercial buildings falls into. As you can see here, you've got an 8% band for properties of £250,000 to £925,000 on a residential property versus just 5% on non-residential. And that's why we're seeing a lot more investors that are looking to buy commercial buildings. So this quick example then is a property that is worth £250,000 and is going to be subject to a stamp down duty land tax liability of just £2,000. Not a great deal, but as I said, if you have not read this small print, you could have a major problem on your hand. Why is it? Well, VAT. If you've got a property value of £250,000 commercial building, you could have a nasty surprise of £50,000 VAT that you have to pay, and that has a consequence of SDLT as well, increasing from that £2,000 to £4,500. So you all of a sudden you now have a cash outflow of £304,500 compared to £252,000, which is a significant outflow because you haven't looked at the small print. So make sure you do that. There have been a number of clients that unfortunately have had that issue. So I've created an online portal where it'll help you to understand how you can save SDLT when you're buying a property, value added tax when you're buying a commercial building or indeed refurbishing a property, the income tax and corporation tax that you can save when making profits on your property portfolio. So make sure you enroll today and start learning how you can save tax on your property portfolio. You can ask for the VAT to be disapplied, by the way. So you can use a 1614D form if indeed you are going to be converting that commercial building into residential. Um, again, I have said more about that in a different video that I spoke about earlier. So please feel free to watch that as I said before. If you've got any questions so far about this slide deck, then please make sure that you type your comments and questions below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I want to now focus my time on TOGC, which is transfer of going concern. 
And if you want to know more about that, then you can look at the 700-9 VAT notice from HMRCs. I have left in the URL so you can do your own research after this. There are pages and pages and pages of this material, but this is a great summary video that captures all the main points. As I said before, TOGC makes sure that uh, you have a transfer of the business itself, which contains just happened to be the building, which means that there's no VAT liability. And since you're saving £50,000, you're also going to save massively on the SDLT as well. So that's a good way of making lots of savings by having a TOGC or transfer of going concern. But what does make a TOGC? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first bit is the building must part be part of a rental business. Now you could have an entity, a limited company, as an example, that says we have this building and we've got four floors and we rent it out to different types of tenants. The first one could be a shop and the next three levels could be offices, as an example. Now you come along and say, well, I like that business as an entity, let's buy the whole business and let's uh, have the transfer of going concern, which does indeed mean there's no VAT because you're buying the business. The building is just incidental, a major incidental, I'll give you, but it's still nevertheless the business that you're acquiring. Ultimately, you're going to continue to use that business as well going forward. And there's no time stamp on this either. So as I said before, people do look to buy commercial buildings and then convert them to residential over time. So is there a genuine time stamp? No, there's not. But you must continue to have the business as it is for the foreseeable future. Again, what does foreseeable future really mean? I really do not know. Neither has HMRC given any guidance. Um, you as an entity or a business entity needs to be VAT registered. Why? Because you're buying a VAT building and you're going to be exempt from this transfer from VAT purposes. The building must be opted to tax as well. So there's a bit more paperwork. So there's two forms that you need to fill in, which is the option to tax on the building and the VAT registration for your business entity, if you haven't done so already. I would typically say do both forms at the same time. Now VAT considerations we need to bear in mind, there could be VAT implications for the tenants because you're charging VAT, but hark, they must have already been paying VAT, were they not? Because the person you're buying has been opted to tax already, so the building must be charging VAT on top of the rent that's been charged. So if it's got £1,000 rental charge, it will have £200 VAT, which you're going to have to carry on with, but they must have had it, so it can't be too much of a, of a bearing on them. You can claim certain VAT back as well. Um, so you typically could have six months of services, so the acquisition of this business will have VAT. You could have that claim back. If you've got stock items ready to be used inside of this property, you too could claim that back in terms of regards to VAT. There is unfortunately more administration. So you have already got the administration duties of the VAT registration and option to tax. But now in your bookkeeping, you're going to have to put the VAT on top of the rental charge as well. So that's worth bearing in mind because it may not be worth all the hassle. Again, as I said before, do watch that video about converting from conver commercial properties to residential because there is huge amounts of VAT and stamp duty land tax that you could be making on that particular type of activity. Don't forget, guys, if you do have any questions, make sure you type those into the box below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you're interested in making tax savings like I've just described, then please discuss our services using the website's link www.optimiseaccountants.co.uk And indeed, if you want to spend more than 60 minutes with me talking about your tax affairs, then you could do so again using that same link. But please make sure you use the code YouTube25 to get your 25% discount. I'm keen to make sure that you save as much tax as possible. And my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants. I'll see you on the next video.